Um, the one we have here is uh, Chateau du Moulin en Vent. It's a Beaujolais. And the grape here, the grape of Beaujolais, of course, is Gamay, um, which is a variety that tends to have less tannin and be pretty, uh, pretty fruity. Um, however, I don't mean that at all in a derogatory way, right? And I think Beaujolais <laughs> often doesn't get the credit it deserves, right? Um, and Edouard, I think it's really interesting that, so you, your family came from outside the wine business and you could have settled anywhere in the wine world. And instead you chose, you chose to settle in Beaujolais specifically. And so can you tell us what it, what it was about Beaujolais that made, um, made it so attractive to you? Yeah, thank you, Tara, for uh, introducing myself. Uh, so I'm uh, Edouard from uh, Chateau du Moulin Vent. What uh, actually brought us to, to Beaujolais is uh, that um, I think one of the very most important thing is that my father, the fils, uh, used to brought for his uh, family lunch and dinners uh, either a wine from Saint Julien or a wine from Moulin Vent in the 70s when he was in his uh, 20s, let's say. And uh, actually, that was something that was very uh, powerful, I think, in his mind. He had this vision, uh, this image of Moulin Vent uh, being of, uh, I would say, of France. It's actually, uh, I would say, a denomination that Moulin Vent has got till the 70s, I would say, and uh, uh, passed in the uh, in all the 19th century. So I think that was really this image of uh, a terroir appellation, a niche appellation. Moulin Vent, it's uh, 600 hectares big, so it's a pretty small place with this very, very uh, uh, emblematic windmill. Um, and uh, yes, this is what drove us to Moulin Vent, the terroir and uh, this, uh, I would say, uh, environment. And what is it about, I, th I think, you know, Beaujolais has these different, these 10 different crews and Moulin Levant is one of them. And what is it that defines the, the terroir signature of Moulin Levant? So Moulin Levant, uh, you're, you're right to mention that, uh, Tara is one of the 10 crews. Uh, uh, so this is the northernmost part of Beaujolais. Uh, Beaujolais mm -hmm. is uh, between uh, Burgundy in the north and Rhone in the south. Uh, right, right from the beginning, uh, pretty well located, with Champagne being uh, just uh, over uh, east uh, of, uh, of Burgundy. So this is very much a line in France, which is, uh, I don't know how to say, but uh, dramatic for wine. It's just like uh, something uh, crazy. And um, mm -hmm. So in this place of uh, Beaujolais, uh, the soils are granitic. Uh, because of this granite, we use the gamay, as you mentioned, the uh, tara. And uh, in Moulin Vent, there are, uh, I would say, three uh, main uh, specificities. Uh, the okay. first one is that, uh, you know, the windmill is not here uh, by uh, hazard. Uh, it has been here for uh, 500 years now. And uh, the wind, we have a kind of a local uh, wind corridor, which is blowing on Moulin Vent uh, on the highest part of the appellation and dries, concentrate uh, the berries of Gamay. That's the first main uh, specificity of Moulin Vent regarding the rest of the cruise. You also have to, when we talk about the cruise of Beaujolais, it's just like when you talk about the AOCs of the Northern Rhone or Burgundy, all these mm -hmm. AOCs are uh, all uh, linked together. They are all neighbors, you know. So right. our distance to Fleury, to Morgon, to Côte de Bruy is very, very small. So it's important to have that in mind because it shows the, the importance, actually, of these uh, specificities. So first, mm -hmm. the winds. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. definitely, we comes on the soil. Uh, the granite in Moulin Vent is uh, particularly sandy. It's so... Very uh, sandy. It's uh, it uh, is uh, very very much, uh, the, the the vines of Gamay. That's the second point, which is very important: the fact that it sands. And the third uh, point, which is also about soil and not uh, environment, I would say, is uh, first of all the presence of silica. 
and second, the presence of, second is here, second, uh, the presence of, of uh, iron. And these two elements uh, naturally present in the soils of Moulin Avant, once more uh, uh, stressing uh, the vines of Gamay, and naturally in Moulin Avant, because of the winds, the sands, and these elements, uh, the mm -hmm. gamay is producing at Chateau du Moulin Avant the, the average yield is 30 hectoliters per hectare, so half of what the AOC authorizes. So we produce smaller yields, small fruits, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. with actually a, a, a more um, a less liquid and more uh, matter, I would say. And this is uh -huh. what makes the specificity uh -huh. of Moulin Avant. So this is part of the reason why this this wine, this Beaujolais, is has a little bit more structure, a little bit more depth than a, what a lot of uh, people would think of as Beaujolais. Yeah. Absolutely, this is a this three reason explain why the wines of Moulin Vent is different nowadays. Uh, why the wines of Moulin Vent have got a reputation of a Grand Cru for uh, the two hundred uh, years before, except the last thirty years where the mass produced uh, wines have uh, made the notoriety of the Beaujolais uh, going down. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, this is what explains the, the history and the quality of the fruits that we uh, harvest uh, here in Moulin Vent. And this is very, very, uh, once more, uh, local to, uh, to Moulin Vent. Yeah. And um, can you also tell us um, just a little bit about the vineyard that it comes from? I mean, the particular vineyard, the Champ, uh, Champ de Cour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, once more, Moulin Avant, it's 600 hectares. So, it's uh, super small, let's say. Out of the 600 hectares, we have 69 uh, Liodi. So, uh, these Liodi are not so famous uh, in the wine world now, but uh, more and more vintners in the Moulin Avant AOC are showing uh, these uh, Liodi because they are... Uh, more and more, uh, yeah, motivated by what's happening in Beaujolais. Uh, Chantecourt is a very famous uh, lieu de for uh, for the for Moulin Vent. It's um, it's actually the two specificities of Chantecourt is that first of all we have a, a good presence of clay. Huh? The, the the main matter is granite for sure. It's granite sands, but we have a good amount of clay because this terroir, uh, I would say, uh, millions of years before, was covered with uh, with water, and the water going out, it released uh, this uh, this clay. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the first specificity of Chancourt, the, the presence of clay, and also mm -hmm. Chancourt. Uh, so the meaning of Chancourt is the field of the family de Cour. So as a field, mm -hmm. you can imagine it's a pretty uh, uh, low slope uh, terroir, two to three mm -hmm. percent. Uh, okay. And here we are at 220 meters altitude, which is, I would say, the average part of Moulin Avant. And we are pretty mm -hmm. uh, hidden from the wind corridor. So mm -hmm. this, the fact that it's hidden from the wind corridor makes a fresher environment here. And so uh, combining the the clay uh, with this fresher environment, it makes mm -hmm. a very very uh, uh, special wine, a wine that uh, vintage after vintage has this uh, uh, linearity, this elegance, this uh, uh -huh. uh, length, I would say, and this is really the the specificity that we can find uh, in Le Chantecourt. Of course, mm -hmm. it's a Moulin Avant, so it will the main source once more is granite, so you will always have this very uh, uh, fruity, huh? it's a gamay, uh, this right. acid uh, driven right. wine, uh, and this very saline, you know, it has a lot of salinity, of salivating effect, which is also very, uh, as we say in France, uh, gourmand, huh? so it uh, it brings you to eat more, which is a, a pretty uh, a good uh, a good, uh, good point, um, okay. but this is, a, yeah, this is a very specific vineyard for us, uh, Chanko. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's a beautiful one. I think it's really interesting how it plays with the cheese as well. Zoe, have you found any particular um, cheeses, uh, any pairings that you really like here? This is a, a Beaujolais that needs no help from cheese. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's lovely. And 
Uh, it is a, a, a nice compliment to cheeses. I think this is a great example of a red wine that's going to be a lot more pairing friendly with cheeses um, for the reasons we mentioned, the more fruit forward character and low tannins. I tried it with our cloth bound cheddar and the cloth bound cheddar that we have has a sweeter note than, than a typical white New England cheddar. I think of a typical white New England cheddar profile as being pretty sulfurous and uh, like flinty and mm. also having a bit of bitterness and a little bit of that like throaty catch that sharp it's often described yes. as sharpness and people love that and they go after like the the biggest hardest white cheddar profile they can find the cloth on cheddar that we do is, is sort of an antidote to that so uh though it is white it is cloth bound and made with a culture that really drives sweetness and nuttiness so it's actually going to play a lot more like a parmigiano reggiano with wines than a typical mm -hmm. cheddar and i think um Tara mentioned that some winemakers have said that, that Parmigiano Reggiano is like the, <clears throat> the go-to can't miss cheese pairing for a lot of wines. And we feel the same way about the cloth bond cheddar. It has the toasted nuts, it's bright, it's, um, it's a little bit sweet and savory and low on the bitterness scale, unlike a typical white cheddar. So I tried it with the, the Beaujolais at, at High Hopes. They played nicely together, but I think the cheese, especially the batch that I have, was a little bit too bright. The same way acidity builds in, uh, can build in wine, it builds in cheese. So lactose, the sugar in, in milk, it relates to potential acidity of the cheese. The milk sugar is converted into acid by the starter cultures. And during the make process, the length at which you let those starter cultures do their work before you pull the curds out of the way is going to affect the end it's acidity of the cheese. And a more acidic cheese is going to be a more crumbly cheese. So usually you can kind of visually see a cheese if it has a more crumbly texture, it's probably going to be a bit brighter. This cheese was too bright for the wine. I didn't find it to be flattering to the lovely wine. I stepped my acidity down a bit to the smoother textured um, Highlander, which is more like a Gruyere or like that Fontina. A smoother textured cheese has not been acidified as much, is going to have a mellower taste. That was a better match, uh, but the intensity of this, the goatiness, that grilled meat quality was too intense for the, um, the, the wine. The wine kind of lost out in the intensity battle. So I actually went all the way back to the Harbison and I, and I was very surprised because Bloomy Rind cheeses like a camembert, usually you you wouldn't go red, <laughs> you'd stick right. to white. But I was very surprised. It brought out a briny quality in the cheese. It was almost like when you put a splash of heavy cream in your pan of mussels that you're cooking, it brought out like a very interesting, delicious, savory, briny, almost seafood note from the cheese. So I, I was shocked that that was my favorite pairing of the three cheeses I tried. Yeah, I almost, I wonder too, if it has something to do with the texture of it. Um, because to me, the uh, the Moulin en Vent has a, a bit of a, there's like a nap to it, you know, because of the acidity and a little bit of tannin that there is there. And then you have that really silky, satiny paste uh, in the Harbison. And, uh, and then there's also something I'm noticing, which is minerality and, uh, or, you know, what I, as, <laughs> be pilloried for using the word minerality, but the uh, the idea of minerality in a in a wine um, and salinity in the cheese somehow um, the two of them feel to me like they're very they're very similar in many of the wines. Um, I'm sorry, in many of the cheeses, the the saline content seems to pull up the more umami flavors and the more like mineral flavors, and and it points up the succulence of the cheese, which is really. Mm -hmm. The texture there was of almost velvety that you were describing of the of the yeah. soft ripened cheese and the, yeah. absolutely. Well, I'm 